Greetings, everyone. How are you today? I hope everybody's doing well during these times and staying safe and having an amazing day. My name is Luke Brian Smith, and I'm here with a very special guest that I've been anticipating for quite some time. Matter of fact, we're guests of each other. We're, we're going to have just a, a dialogue and uh, introduce you all to each one of us. I'm here with Carlin. Carlin, tell us a, tell us a bit about yourself. So I am a soul photographer. Um, so I, and a poet and a um, self love and body image empowers. And I help women step into the truth of who they are through the process of art and photography. And um, when I say soul photography, what I mean by that is um, the photography experience is just that it's more about an experience rather than just photographing someone. So we're really tapping into um, photographing who you are from the inside out and um, exploring vulnerability and, um, and being seen uh, through photography. And so it's a little bit about what I do. And then I do poetry and um, I help women with body image and self-love as well. Wow, I can, vouch, I can certainly vouch for the photography because uh, how I met Carlin is actually my wife uh, uh, found her. Um, I'm not sure exactly how, but I'm glad she did. But we had a, a photo session, a family uh, photo session with her a while back, a couple of months ago. And it was an experience. It, it wasn't just a, a, a picture taking. She she involved um, just us, just in the elements, and just you can tell that she was totally. It was totally about us and the surroundings, and just it was an experience. That's all I can say. I don't. I can't put too much on it, but thank you. It, it was yeah. a, it was a great experience. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, I think, because we also bring in the elements of the earth and, you know, the universe, it, it, it all comes into a natural flow. And it just, it's part of creating. <laughs> Absolutely. And I felt that um, I could feel your, your, your energy and just your passion for what you do, you know, in regards to your, just yourself and um, the energy that you project. And that's very important to me to, uh, especially when you're taking these photos that are going to be memories that last a lifetime, you know, you want to be in the right mindset, the right uh, atmosphere, the right feeling to, to uh, take the best pictures as possible. You know, right. you, you don't want to feel like, oh, here we go. You know, we're just in this, uh, you know, I'm just going to like, type. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people like, well, I, I can't speak for other photographers, but I think a lot of photography is, you know, where I'm just going to capture you and take this picture of this moment in time you're, because there's either a birthday or, um, you know, every year you do the family picture that's for for the record or to keep for, you know, on the wall with the other family pictures. Whereas for me, photography is really it's it goes beyond that. And it's it's about I want to capture the essence of who you are. Um, where time and space doesn't really matter, if that if that makes sense. <laughs> no, it makes total sense uh, because I we didn't feel like um, I know I didn't, and I can. We didn't feel like that we were on any time clock. It was just go with right. the flow. Um, and we were pressed, not really pressed, but we wanted to take advantage of certain lighting, which mm -hmm. you know, but that had nothing to do. That's that's the universe. That's God. Right. But, <laughs> as far as hurry up and this and that, no, it, it felt very calm and relaxing. And it, it made me, I know it made me feel a lot more relaxed and able to be more natural than to try to uh, fix myself like, a fix certain way. Course. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and even just as we're talking about this, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just like this reminder of like how we flow through life. Like that, and that's where art and I think life are so similar is when you really tap into the space within the art, within any art, um, you, you're tapping into, it's almost like you're tapping into a soul or a direct line with, with the universe or God or whatever your belief system yeah. is there is something that you're tapping into and it and it directly correlates to life where when you trust and you let go of this control or you let go of this has to go this way. Like I made a plan and if I don't follow the plan, <laughs> like then I failed. Where in art, 
the best things come from mistakes or from letting go of the process and just allowing things to be. And I think um, like the way what you were what you were experiencing or what you were just describing about the flow, I, I think that like it correlates just the same thing to life where yeah. makes Absolutely. Sense. We touched on that a little bit when we uh, talked a couple of days ago about setting up this this uh, dialogue, this this um, um, collaboration, if you will, about the flow. And I said, you know, I had just really start learning really to embrace everything, not saying that we desire uh, what we call negativity or whatever, but just to when things go a certain way that you really didn't plan on it going that you embrace it anyway as if it's supposed to go that way and and it doesn't pull you down and drown you like resisting it and right. complaining about it and feeling so bad about it now it's natural human you know uh um part of being human to you know be disappointed but mm -hmm. we don't have to focus and and grovel and stay connected with those feelings of, uh, of negativity or resentment or just, oh, it didn't go the way I wanted to. We can actually open ourselves up to learn from why didn't it go that way? Or, okay, it just must, it, it wasn't meant to be. Maybe the universe was saving us for, from something and it wasn't supposed to happen. Because uh, I read a quote, I forgot who it was by, but it said the universe doesn't give you uh, what you want. It gives you uh, what you're ready for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, so I can totally resonate exactly what you're, what you're saying. And I, I understand that. And as I say, I can't say it enough, the experience with, um, your photography and your, your art in that aspect, I can totally reaff I can totally affirm and vouch for that. Um, it was very, um, just serene and, and, and beautiful. And it was yeah. it was a different experience that I've ever had. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with going to some, you know, major studio and sitting in the studio and taking quick pictures and getting out quick if that's what you want. But if you want an experience, if you want uh just to feel that 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 energy of it's hard to describe, but if you want an experience while while uh, taking your pictures, I I would I would suggest highly recommend that you connect with Carlin, and we will uh, put her contacts and how to reach her by the end of this video. This Thank second, you. but uh, let's talk about more about okay. Your photography is a big thing, obviously, mm -hmm. and not only do you you take the pictures, but you also edit them and. Tell us a little bit about that process. So um, for me, the editing process isn't necessarily, um, I don't like to change or fix people. It's enhancing. It's almost like a painter paints a photograph, right? So I, so let's say if we, we have a sunset. Yes, the sunset was beautiful, but I can make it even more, <laughs> even more so by adding in colors or by like adding in um, different, different, uh, I don't, I don't know the words, uh, different things to enhance the photo in terms of making it more of an art piece rather than coming in and editing, editing you. So I don't necessarily go in and I don't change people, but I change the environment um, to make it more like a painting so that the artwork, it becomes a piece of artwork rather than just a photograph. But means. you can fix quote unquote. Yes, I can. Flaws. Flaws. But yeah. yeah. But part of what I, part of my, um, what I, what I love about photography is that I, I totally believe the things that society has set up as flaws or imperfections are actually the things that make us beautiful. Wow. So wow. instead of altering them, I tend to highlight them. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but, um, but that, but that's because I, I don't believe in this idea of that we need to be fixed or that there's things wrong with us. I believe that we are the way that we are and we should embrace exactly who we are because- Unique, beautiful. Yeah, we're unique. Yeah, beautifully and authentic. unique. Exactly, yes. yeah. I believe, yeah, everyone's uh, beautifully unique and you, you certainly um, enhance that. 
uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, what what else did you say you you do you did besides uh, oh, photography? Um, so I do um, I I do poetry. I'm a poet. Um, I um, and navigating a little bit towards spoken word, but a lot of my poetry um, now is around. Um, I guess it's empowering, um, uplifting, and about connecting to the universe, connecting to our higher self, um, connecting to within within our own being to um, navigate through life and um, with our own power. Oh, okay. Is that that's the the uh, if I say subject matter that that you that you revolve your poetry around? Yeah, I mean it it comes out that way. <laughs> um, I. I found, I first started writing about five years ago. I went through a very um, pretty intense uh, breakup after seven years. And um, I actually quit photographing for two years and completely like, it wasn't, it wasn't a really a choice. It was just, I, I there was no desire <laughs> to do that. And it came out and then the passion came out in, um, in writing and, and since then, it's it's navigated and it's expanded in its own in its own way. Um, now, I I don't know where some I don't know how to explain it because it's just like I'll sit down to write and then it'll come out. <laughs> no, that's that's the universe uh, yeah. using you as a conduit. Right. And what I found that often not to 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 uh, elaborate on what you're saying. Oftentimes, the the adversities that we go through propel us to do uh things that we wouldn't normally be able to do or normally did wasn't even aware of 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 the the level of of gifts that we have exactly and that's where you can take that pain and that um that undesired uh situation and get, draw something beautiful from it and that's what you have done and I know we're not talking about me quite yet, but that's oh, pretty right. much what, what has propelled me <laughs> along my journey is going through just things that I didn't think I was going to make it through and just just such a, a, a heartbreak and, you know. It, right. It, it, I think I think that's where where vulnerability comes in in a different way, in a way of where with with ourselves, there comes a point when you hit so much pain and so much um, hardness that you have to surrender to it because mm -hmm. it's, it's almost at the point of like, I can't continue to do this. So I have to let it go. I have to face it. And I think yes. the second you face it and the second you surrender is when you're given your greatest gifts. Um, Absolutely. and they're uncovered and however, however they come about, but that's, I think that's part of the healing process as well is you do hit this and it doesn't it could take two years it could take five years it could take a week <laughs> but at some point you have to surrender to it and say i'm I, I, okay I, there's a better way yes what i what i have learned um along my journey is you know before when when certain things would happen you know with myself or in regards to other people people that are close to me that was uh, really you know a, a trying experience, I tend to turn, I, I always, prior, I, I would always uh, blame and look for fault mm -hmm. outward. But I've gotten to a point where when things happen, um, I look within now and figure out how can I evolve from this? How can I, you know, change? And I put less less um, blame on other people. Now, now granted, other people, can do things that we feel aren't right, but I tend to uh, send more love and see them in a in a different light as to how I would like things to be, and just stay you know optimistic and have faith that things are happening in the right way, and everything comes around full circle. They're going to learn their lessons that they need to learn, and I'm not the one that's responsible for teaching them the, those lessons unless the universe puts me in that position to do so but all I can do really is 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 just really turn within and work on myself and become a better person um and 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 what can be the tricky uh, part is there there's uh times where you're working on yourself and becoming better and 
there, the people that you would like are not around to really see that, mm -hmm. or they won't give you that chance to see that, that growth. They just see you as to whatever experience they had with you um, mm -hmm. before. So they don't understand. And you can't force anybody to do that. And you have to trust again, in the, in the universe and that as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing within and trusting the universe that everything will be orchestrated exactly. uh, the right way and, and, that, and that's that can be the, that can be a difficult part is just trusting and just yeah. allowing yeah and i think to to say to to go back to when you were talking about within and um and with a and how you have learned how you were blaming other people and i i think that's gratitude to say or not gratitude that's and to give honor to the fact that that's honing your power that's understanding you and and becoming aware that you create your your world you create what is around you and that other people don't necessarily yes they can have impact but you have the choice to respond and how you respond it just depend upon you so it comes back to you right and i think i've had a number of people come in and out like what you're talking about where you know, I'm definitely not, I'm not the same person I was a year ago. I'm not the same person I was six months ago. Like, I feel like I, especially with COVID, we're all going like into these deep, deep self reflection spaces. Um, but, but knowing, having to trust that, you know, the universe is putting these people in my, pl in, in my place or in my space for a reason, whether that's to grow or to learn or to, to create with, um, I think, that is hard when you're losing people. Um, but I also do believe it when, when you're saying like that becomes a trust, like you have to trust the universe. I think once you become so fully in trust with the universe the, and with yourself, that the understanding that people come and go is no longer as hard. There's almost a beauty to it in the way that they flow in and out. Absolutely. Beautifully yeah. orchestrated. <laughs> um, now, what you're your uh your poetry does does that help uh let, let me see is that therapeutic for you yeah for me it's um it's almost a like when i first started writing it it was just i honestly the first thing i wrote i was at a copy machine <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh i gotta get these thoughts out and i wrote it down and i was like well that's that's a poem okay and then the more that then that would happen more often so it is therapeutic but it's also like it's i don't know how to describe the creative process um that i get has always been a, there's this urge almost like when you crave like ice cream or like you crave you're craving a food and that craving doesn't go away until you like get it and you can push it away but then like two days later you're like oh i still want that um but once you have it you're like okay i'm like that was good i don't have that craving anymore um artistic flow for me is kind of like that like ideas will come in and until I until I sit down and let them out they bug bug the shit up bug bug me <laughs> yeah. no I understand um uh in regards to the music that that I'm inspired to create it's it's like a part of me and uh, what a lot of people don't understand when they say oh you still do music or whatever it's like no this is this is what is part of me and this is what um helps me to get, you know, my feelings out there and, and it's therapeutic. It's like my own personal uh, psychiatry or psychologist or whatever. I'm, I'm helping myself by eradicating, you know, things and, and absorbing things and then and opening myself up to the flow of the universe because there's often times where I, where, where in circumstances where I write things and I'm like, how the mm -hmm. heck did I do that? Like. And then I've even had other people tell me, you, you hire um, a, a professional writer to do that? And I'm like, yeah, the universe. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 My higher self. That's my professional <laughs> writer. But other yeah. than that, you know, I think uh, I will keep uh, writing and doing that for as, as long as I'm led to do it. Because what drives me is, is, is you know, not only helping myself but but just helping other people even if it's just one or two you know I, there's always someone that you're going to inspire by the things that you you know you go through because we all go through 
you know, everybody's fighting a battle, even if you, they don't show it, you know, and oftentimes we feel like we're alone, that we're going through this, this breakup and how come this is not going right for me or with my children or, or marriage or whatever. And I feel like I'm the only one. What, why is it me? But there's other people, just people have different ways of, of, of showing it, but everybody has some type of battle, whether they're uh, rich in, in, in monetary and in, in or poor, everybody has battles, is fighting some type of battle. Yeah. And yeah. And, it, and it's, I think it's often, a lot of times it's within, and we live in this society that doesn't really um, uh, enlighten, not, I don't want to use the word enlighten, but um, put light on, on, on this idea that it's okay to be depressed, it's okay to have feelings, it's okay to not be happy all the time. Yes. And we live in a society where perfection is like so highlighted that if you like, it took me a long time to, 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 to go to therapy. Um, yes. And I love therapy. I think everybody should be <laughs> in therapy. Like, I think that it is, it, it's amazing on um, what it can do for you. Um, but if you oftentimes, if I'm in a conversation, I'm like, oh, my therapist, and he's like, wait, you're in therapy. Like, it's yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. It's um, been it's been labeled like something must be definitely wrong with you. Well, isn't right. there something wrong with everybody if you right. really think about it? <laughs> right, exactly. Like, and that's like something of, of like this thing that, oh, we're alone. And I, one of my missions in life is you're not alone. We're all struggling this and to highlight, like I suffer with depression. I have suffered with it for a long time. I choose not to be medicated around it, but I do things to, to aid, um, in, in my daily practice, you know, I meditate, I do all these things that I know that I need to do to, that is my medicine. Right. Um, but most people wouldn't just sit here and be like, oh, I struggle with depression or I struggle with this because of what, what society thinks on it, um, or whatever their things are. But I, I am a true believer in, in bringing it to light because, like you said, we're all the same. And, all and the same. I applaud you so very much for, for and it, it, it's probably not even for being willing to be vulnerable. And that probably isn't even being vulnerable for you. It's just, you're just being real. And yeah. I appreciate that because, you know, that inspires me to put it more out there. I haven't really uh, ever focused on what I, what I'm, I like to say, overcoming. And I've been overcoming uh, anxiety Mm -hmm. and depression and things like that as well and a lot of people probably think well you come out with so much uh positive things well that doesn't mean that you know i don't i don't go through you know adversities and things it's just that right. i'm choosing to to put things out there that's more focused on overcoming rather than focused on the actual uh, uh problem so to speak it doesn't right. mean that i don't have any uh quote unquote problems uh, it, matter of fact, it's it's because of the struggles that I'm dealing mm -hmm. with that's really inspiring me to write what I write. So it's affirming and helping to pull me out of this place, you know, right. and to to use, uh, so to speak, uh, embrace where I am and mm -hmm. draw some power from it. Use it as fuel instead of uh, right. instead of a, a weakness or, you know, think you know, something like that. So no, I appreciate you sharing that because there's a lot of people that's embarrassed um, to, to, to touch on that subject that, you know, they're, they're, they may be suffering from um, depression or, you know, uh, anxiety or, you know, things yeah. of that uh, nature. So that, that's a good thing that you can get out there because I believe, I'm a firm believer that if you shine a light on something, then that's when you can start really working on it. You're hiding and denying and, uh, you know, just like in the, uh, in, in, you know, with, with, with drug addicts or alcoholics, they, they, their first step is admitting that you have a problem, you know, exactly. or that it's there in, in embracing that, that fact that, Hey, yes, this isn't, no, no, I don't really have a problem. I just do this every now and I can stop whenever I, no, we, you have a problem. So now you can start working on it and, and, and drawing to you other people that may be in similar, uh, circumstances that you can learn, you know, exactly positive, right things to do and things not to do. So, 
Well, and I think that's when it becomes it becomes a dance instead of a struggle to to keep afloat. You know, it's when, once you are like, okay, once you say, like, okay, this is here, it's here, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I have to deal with it. Um, you take the control back, and then you're in the stance. Okay, well, now what do I do? I know this is here. I'm not going to allow you to take me, you know, to the deepest depths of of the day where I'm not going to get out of bed. I can get out of bed. But I know I have tools. I have the things that are in in place um, to to aid in that, right? Because I think once you're right, once you you say that this is a problem, the control um, you gain the power to do what's next to make the choice on how you respond. Absolutely. Whereas when you don't announce it, it's it's you're trying to cover it up and push it away. And when you do that, you're not even acknowledging it. Yes. So, and the thing is, when you think that uh, everybody else knows too, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> everyone knows. <laughs> it's not. It's not hidden very well, you know. Um, but I think that's just yeah. When you start to uh, acknowledge it, you play this this dance where it becomes a fluid a fluid thing that you can start to hone in, and it can even, like you said, become become something that you use to fuel you, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah. Okay, is there, that was beautiful, by the way. Is there anything else that you do? Um, I mean, that's um, a lot what you have going yeah, on. I is do. there anything else you would like yeah, to share? A lot. Um, I mean, I'm just a big, I just am the things, I do a lot of things. I don't really like, We. I could probably like, I, I dab in that and I dabble in that. But the, the main things that I do is I'm really just, um, I want to, aid people in um, finding their who they are and and showing up in the world as their most most authentic self and so whether that's through art whether that's through coaching whether that's through meditation or however we do it um, that's I just I I understand what it's like to not be seen and so but I also understand what it's like when you let go and you you find the liberation and allow yourself to to show up in the truth of who you are, it's it's pretty, it's powerful stuff. So I just, whatever, I don't know. I'm just this, I'm just like, I'm just a vessel of light and I'm here to create, <laughs> do whatever, and whatever. That's beautiful, man. And because of that, you know, you're, you're, um, you're a, light, a beacon of light to other people as well as yourself. And that's a good thing because I know that, um, it, it, it wasn't a coincidence that, um, our connection is being oh. made now. Um, yeah. And when we talked, we spoke a little bit after the photo session, we we saw that we had a lot of, we were excited because we were yeah. kind of throwing ideas at each other that we both resonated with. And it's like, I, I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, you spoke with me the other day a bit about uh, some retreat you have going on. Can, I, uh, can you tell me what, what's that about? Oh yeah, so I'm um, so I'm working with um, so Soul Camps, and they are um, a mother daughter duo that do retreats um, all over the world. And so um, in January, I'm I'm going to go with I'm going I'm hopping on their team and going to Costa Rica for a, a women's retreat on mind, body, and soul. Wow. So, yeah. So it's um, I'm going to be doing a workshop on self love and. Um, doing uh, a combination of meditation and um, journaling and, and writing to, to, to bring in um, new ways of, of going throughout the day with, and um, in self-love. So like a lot of I am statements and a lot of, I call it um, creating the CEO statement of your life. And so what that is, is that's basically um, like a, a CA, CEO statement for, for a business, you know, is your what your business like what your business is based off of so i believe if we do that on an energetic level with our own life and then everything we do throughout um the day or throughout our life is based off of the ceo ceo statement so if it doesn't align with what what your purpose is or what your passion about around your life is you don't do it and if it does then you say fat yes and you show up wow and you're gonna do all this in a beautiful tree yeah setting i might add Yes. <laughs> well, that's gonna that's gonna intensify and enhance what your what your exactly. agenda is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
Um, could you tell everyone uh, different platforms or ways to uh, to find you, to see anything, uh, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, anything, right. anything you want to share? I'm on Instagram, um, Carlene Canel at Carlene Canellis. Um, and then um, uh, on Facebook, I have um, Carlene Canellis as well. Uh, that's my photography page and I have a personal page. Um, and then I also have a women's, um, a sisterhood online for women called Be Brave, Be You. And um, it's a place for women to show up as themselves, meet like-minded women, um, get, dabble in some empowering thoughts. And then I have uh, people come, out, come on once or twice a month and we have a discussion kind of like what we just did on a certain topic. Um, so it's just like a space to, to be uh, for pos positivity and connection right now in this time. Well, that sounds beautiful. Um, now, Carlene Canellis, could you spell that out for? So it's C-A-R-L-E-N-E -E, and then Canellis is K-A-N-E-L-L-I-S. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so that they could write it down. Well, I appreciate all that that you just shared and I'll just talk a little bit about myself um, yeah. now. So well, basically, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, my name is Luke Brian Smith. And of course, my mother didn't name me Luke. That was a nickname that I picked up early on from childhood friends um, because I was always, uh, I always had something going on, some type of uh, um, business that I was putting together as a, as a kid, like a lawn mowing business, car washing business. So they start calling me Luke because that equates <laughs> to, to money. Like I, I was always, mm -hmm. always had something going on. Um, paper routes, uh, that's pretty much extinct nowadays. Everything's online, but I create what I uh, have entitled self-empowerment hip hop music. And although I do dabble in, in other genres of music such as pop and um, R&B, uh, my main um, my main focus when I'm when I'm creating the music is to inspire people through the lyrics and give people an alternative to uh, a lot of the negativity and a lot of the um, uh, self destructive uh, music that's out there on on uh, on the mainstream um, TV and radio these days. And I'm not saying that there's no good music out there or anything like that. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying my main focus is, is on enlightening people, really just to empower, um, uh, uh, liberate and, and, and help you, uh, you know, uh, focus on positivity. And that's what I do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you, what got you into, how did you start, I don't know, were, was music um, always around the in, enlightening and empowering positivity or? Um... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, prior to that for years, I was creating a more, um, I, I was involved in a, in a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, of urban, like gangster style uh, okay. of music. And as I've grown and, and evolved and, and start, uh, you know, looking in, in myself, I wanted to project and put something, um, take responsibility for, for what I'm putting out there, you know, um, not only uh, because it represents me, but just it also influences other people. And uh, before, I don't think I was influencing um, myself or other people in a very uplifting way, a very positive way. A lot of the music that I was creating was, you know, uh, focused on um, uh, destructive behaviors as, as, as far as, uh, you know, um, indulging in, in, in alcohol, uh, overindulging in alcohol and, you know, drug use and womanizing and, you know, violence. And that's, that's not really the person I was in mm -hmm. the first place. I mean, in, in certain aspects, yes, but that's not, as I've grown, I don't, I, I no longer want to participate in, right. really. in that or project that, even if it's cool to do so, or it's quote unquote, uh, what sells. Um, yeah. So as I've uh, progressed and, and really 
you know, working on myself. And when I say working on myself, I'm saying being more conscious of, of my thoughts and, and my words and my feelings and, and doing a lot of reading um, mm-hmm. from, from, from books, uh, from authors such as uh, uh, Napoleon Hill and Yogananda Paramahansa from, from uh, just a whole, whole lot, Greg Braden, um, who else we got? Uh, just so many, I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Joseph Murphy, um, Neville Goddard, uh, just so many, um, Louise Hay, just a lot, of, a lot of empowering books that basically are all focused on the same type of thing, but from their perspective. And I think just reaffirming that and, and, and filling my mind with that is helping me a lot. Um, just like when you watch uh, 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 listen to a certain type of music, you're reaffirming that, especially music is, very, is a very powerful uh, energy, you know, mm-hmm. because it's repetitive, it, 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 it involves a lot of feeling. And, and oftentimes when you listen to, to a song, you know, that you like, you're, you're putting a lot of your feeling and energy behind that and you're learning that. But, you have to uh, be aware of what those lyrics are actually saying, because that an element of that is is definitely drawing closer into your life. You know what you keep repeating, and those situations and scenarios. You know whether it be violence or you know um, things of that nature. You're going to draw some some. I, I believe that you're going to draw some type of element of that into your own life that's what you're focused on. So music that I'm creating now is, is, is focused on empowerment and goal oriented and success and love and peace and just resilience and just reaching towards your higher self. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, no, I complete, I a hundred percent agree. And it even comes down to, to YouTube. I have like, a, or not YouTube, uh, the TV. I, um, prime example, I, I spend a lot of time on the computer, so I have things going. I watch Netflix or have <clears throat> you, but I found myself, um, I used to really like 48 Hours, <laughs> uh, the crime show. And, oh, yeah. um, and I found myself um, after a few days in a really, really bad mood. And I couldn't like, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, why am I so mad? And then I turned on my show and I was like, oh my God, you've been watching 48 Hours and listening to all this crap for for days and so that's when I started realizing that the things that we're putting into our our headspace directly affects our mood um so which relates correlates that's just my experience around but music I I believe a hundred percent is even more effective than than the tv no I'm right there with you I used to watch forensic files all the time and then these shows where they're how to catch a, a killer and all that mm-hmm. and all that swirling around in my head and, and watching um, news all the time. And it's good to be, you know, it's okay to be informed, but if you're watching something that's always projecting, uh, you know, oh, this person got killed uh, or, or this and that, and, you know, the, the tragedies that that is often um, um, shown, you know, then that, that, that's going to really impact your, your, your feelings and, Mm-hmm. And, and just your overall energy and things that you attract and just your mindset. So you have to be, you have to be real, real cautious, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not speaking from a person that's, that's, has perfectly, you know, I don't really watch that much TV anymore, very know. little. And when I do, it's usually like a home building or, mm-hmm. or uh, something educational and a lot of food. I, I love, I'm a foodie. So I watch a lot of food, uh, you know, guys' grocery games or Triple G or <laughs> Top Shelf or, you know, Beat Bobby Flay and things like that. So, you know, yeah. and, and every now and then I'll catch myself uh, putting a movie on that at the end of that movie. I said, I probably shouldn't have watched that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Good for me. But, <laughs> but at least I'm taking notice and I'm doing something, you know, proactive instead of right. just blah blah I'll put myself in front of anything there's certain oh. times where people have invited me to watch certain things no I'm not gonna watch that it sounds good and I know oh but it's these guys in it I understand but no yeah. thank you yeah and I think that's that's part of being consciously aware of what you're putting into your to your 
your your your temple really it's just like food like if you're you know if you're on a diet or your nutrition or or whatever you have i think it's the same thing with what you're putting into your head so what, what you're reading what you're watching who you're speaking to how you're speaking um um yeah directly affects that but it, um, and it's a daily thing too that's what yeah, people oh. need to realize it's just like you take a shower to keep clean you don't just take a shower one day and then think you're going to smell fresh and be clean for the rest of the week it's like right. no, you have to keep doing this you know right and that's what i was gonna that was what i was gonna ask you about like i know i have um tools in my tool toolbox that i do every day um to maintain my mental health and to maintain my attitude and it just gets me into a space to create and a space to go through life that um i want that's where i want to be um do you have do you have a daily practice or do you have like what are your tools absolutely i i read i mean uh, this might be extreme for some people but i read for uh an app on average of two hours a day you know i'm reading the the self-empowerment books and the self-help while i'm listening to some soft music it could be classical you know beethoven and sebastian bach and vivaldi or whatever or uh smooth jazz or just you know, sometimes just nature sounds as I'm reading, but that really just is, is a form of meditation for me. So I do that and I listen to a lot of positive offer affirmations, you know, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I even have some positive affirmations of my own self that I wrote for myself. So it's like my own voice in my head that I, I put in and play for like mm -hmm. a half an hour a day. So I do this every day. You know, yeah. when I wake up in the morning, I'm listening to positive affirmations. The first thing I do is express gratitude for, you know, for my life and those around me and send out um, a positive path to wherever I have to go and envision it being, you know, um, safe and peaceful. And yeah, I do. Yeah. I do exactly the same, the same. I don't, I don't read, but oh, I do read, but it's on audio. Yeah. But so, so I, <laughs> but <laughs> affirmations are. I am like the biggest. I I hundred percent agree. If, if, you, if I don't get a meditation done, my affirmations they yes. they're getting done. Like no matter what, because I totally I understand the power of them. And my my friends laugh and like they don't laugh at me, but they're like you're crazy about it. And I'm like, yeah, well, you should be too. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. You got to work on yourself, especially you know. Oftentimes, the mindset that we we have or have to, you know, that we've developed has come from, you know, years, you know, childhood of, of, of wrong things, you know, some good things too, but you, you, you can't expect to, to undo, you know, all that just with a few things or, or going about it, you know, qu you know, quote unquote, half, half, you know, asked. So you gotta, it has to, it, it's going to take some time and some work and some effort and, you know, you can't just, it, it can't be just, it has to be a lifestyle. It can't right. be something that, okay, I read these two positive books and now my life still seems the same, you know? And it's like, no, it's like, now you have to learn to, you know, if your life still seems the same, it's because there's some more changes that you need to make and exactly. some things you need to still embrace and to accept. And so right. exactly what it is. Like, I don't look at it at what I do is something I'm just doing for a short period. I feel like this is me for, for the rest of my life. Right. So regardless if this draws to me, you know, millions of dollars, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to say, okay, I'm financially wealthy now. I don't have to do that anymore. No, because you can still be miserable and, and have, you know, mm -hmm. you know, money or have the house that you want. You know, you're still you, you're still stuck here. So you still have to work on that, you know, and, yeah. and self-fulfillment and inner peace. And you, you want to have that. So, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an integration. I think it's, it's, I think once you've tapped into this, um, this trust and this um, knowing that it's kind of a knowing that the universe has your back and a knowing that when you trust yourself and know who you are, um, you can do anything and you know that these are, that this is how you did it. Like, this is how you got there was through this process. And so it's like a knowing that I want to continue feeling like this. So I'm going to continue to 
to to use my tools and to continue to use this this frame of um, mind um, because it uh, I don't know how to explain it in words really it's um, it's a really nice place to be <laughs> yes, absolutely <laughs> yeah um, but um, in terms of um, creating I'm kind of going off topic but in terms of creating uh, is, is it, I, I know it's therapeutic for you, but is there, do you have like a process or does it, is it like sometimes for me, I'm like, oh no, I got to find a pen because this is coming out right now. Yeah, I go through that often and I, and I often, um, I use the, the voice recorder on my phone so that I can capture, you know, that moment or that idea because I feel like, in, you know, you know, the universe or God has given me that idea. So let me let me capture this right now. You know, I've I've had instances where I've um, uh, woken up in the middle of the night because of something, a creative idea, or just something you know inspiring has has come to mind. So, and then I get my recorder and and, and say it, or I have to go to the bathroom real quick so I don't wake anybody up, and and, and then say it, and then get back to sleep. <laughs> but Mostly my creative process is, uh, you know, in regards to, to the music is I actually uh, set, set the intention as I what I usually get a, an instrumental um, that I pick out for my producer, um, Aries Bedgood, um, a.k.a. Aristotle the Great. <laughs> and um, and uh, he usually sends over something that I really resonate with that I know that's going to going to cultivate and inspire um you know some 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 good thoughts and creation so i sit down with that and in a room alone and it just it at, at the time it just flows it just starts to flow and i just start to write it down it's like like i mentioned before it's like a conduit like i'm a conduit and it just mm -hmm. you know just, I'm just a tool and it just it comes out and you know from some of my experiences from some things that i don't know where it comes from but it's, it's just a, an awesome um, feeling mm -hmm. um, to have something that I write down or a certain mel melody that I come up with that I'm like, how did I even think of that? You know, and now I really don't question that anymore because I know how I thought of that. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I'm starting to calm down more and just embrace the fact that it is happening and that it is, it, it is a higher purpose for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for that. I 100% know what you're talking about. Uh, and then I was gonna, um, for for somebody who's like, oh, I have this, um, I have this passion or this desire to create, to 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 dabble in music or to dabble in really whatever their passion is. Um, what is like, what is something you would say to them as far as not letting it, it's like if fear comes up or or, um, I know for me for a long time I was like, oh, when when the time is right, when whatever I made up in my head, you know, the perfect time and it's not right now. Um, um, what is your like words of advice to somebody who's who's struggling with that, with that, that uh, step forward to, to active to actively pursue the thing? Basically, it's just, um, yeah, I understand what you're saying because there's another quote I, I forgot who says it or a lot of people say, it, but they say when the um, the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. But um, I just say that people quit resisting and and having the need to control everything of how how it goes. If you have this passion or this feeling, it's put there for a reason. So so take a step on it, and if you really don't know how to uh, go about it, you know, talk to people, read books on, on how they got started or just, you know, simply pray or meditate and, 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 and affirm and, and ask the universe to give you the, the wisdom and knowledge to, to, uh, to, um, to move forward on, on your goals. And I, I believe if you, if you open yourself up instead of, um, just having these pre-conceived um, uh, ideas as to how things should go. I think if you open yourself up, um, 
it will come. It mm -hmm. will come because because when I stop trying to control and let go, and I saw an interview, you you mentioned Oprah Winfrey earlier, but I saw an interview before where she says that when she finally uh, uh, let go and she started to sing a song, I forgot how it went, but it was something um, in regards to just letting go. Mm. And she said after that happened, that's when things started to flow in her life. And obviously in a, um, in a, a monetary way, we all know that it, it has it flowed extensively in her life. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, yeah, I, I can just say uh, there's no one that can tell you really how to follow your own passion. I mean, mm -hmm. they can tell you how to how they follow their passion and what worked for them. But I think that um, everybody has a unique journey and, you know, and, and it's custom to them. And so just open up yourself for your own from your own wisdom, because we're all um, part of the, the, you know, the universe. So and the universe doesn't is not based on uh, uh, fear and failure. It's like we, we do that. We impose that, you know, with our own thinking, you know, everything's abundant in the universe. And, and that's who we are, mm -hmm. you know, abundant um, our beings, spiritual beings with a with a physical shell. So we have to know that we have power. We all have power. Everybody does. Everybody has unique talents. You just mm -hmm. have to tap into them. It's not, oh, I don't have any talent. Well, if you keep saying that and affirming that, then you won't find it. So, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'd like to tell everyone how they can reach me as well. Yes. Um, uh, you can follow me. Uh, you can find me on on uh, Facebook at Luke, Luke Brian Smith. And if you just Google that name, it'll have, I have a website under LukeBrianSmith.com. And um, you can look me up on on YouTube under Luke Brian Smith or Enlightened, Empowered, Evolved. And how you spell my Luke Brian Smith is L-O-O-T-B-R-Y-O-N-S-M-I-T-H. And a lot of people, they mess up with the B-R-Y and put B-Y-R. It, it plays games with them, but it's B-R-Y-O-N. It's a very unique spelling. But yeah. if you just Google that, you'll you'll find me. Awesome. And I have a, 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 a song I just released called uh, Entitled Smile. I think everyone will. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I heard, I listened to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've definitely got some um, some testimonies and feedback that it that has put a smile on, on mm -hmm. people's faces. So I'm I'm appreciative and, and great, grateful for that. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoy talking to you today. And I, I think um, it just makes me uh, look forward to, to first of all, uh, be grateful for this moment in time, mm -hmm. but to also look, look forward to what we have next, because I, I told you I was going to mention, we're going to put together, Carla and I are going to put some, Carlene, right? Yeah. Carlene, mm -hmm. I said Carlene. Carlene okay. and I <laughs> is going to put something together um, um, in regards to music and infusing poetry and music and yeah. see what beautiful creation that uh that comes out of that that manifests from that yeah i look awesome. forward to that me too <laughs> so everyone for... uh i appreciate everyone uh taking the time to uh listen to this this segment and have a enjoy a a, a wonderful day a peaceful evening and we'll see you soon <laughs>